Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and one of the most frequently asked questions that I keep getting all the time is Sir, which is the most important nakshatra in a horoscope? Do we see the moon nakshatra because it's the janma nakshatra after all, right? Uh, or do we see the lagna nakshatra, the ascendant nakshatra, which one is it? So. Or, or is it the sun's nakshatra? In India, they give more importance to the moon nakshatra in the west and in some other places uh, like the Middle East, they give more importance to the sun nakshatra, right? Sun sign as they say. You will not much hear the word moon sign, right? But in India, you won't hear much of sun sign. You will find, you know, what's your Rashi basically. Or some say, you know, for different events of life, you should see different nakshatras. So, for example, for marriage, you should see your seventh lord um, or, you know, Venus or maybe both. For career, you should see your tenth lord's nakshatra. What is it? Well, the answer is there is no one single nakshatra which is the most important, right? So, there are two things you have to understand. One is the generic another is the specifics okay so in general the entire chart matters okay so what does it mean the entire chart matters so it means that there is an inherent flow of the horoscope okay every every other event of life is uh, based on the flow of the horoscope okay so that's the generic answer but then there is a specific answer so specifically if you want to see marriage, you have to see four nakshatras primarily. You have to see the nakshatra of the second house, which means uh, the second lord's nakshatra. Where is the second lord sitting? In which nakshatra? Then the seventh lord, of course. Then the eleventh lord and Venus. Okay. And if Venus is either your second, seventh or eleventh lord, then uh, you just see three nakshatras. Okay. And if you want to see career, you have to see the second Lord's Nakshatra, the sixth Lord's Nakshatra, the tenth Lord's Nakshatra, and the eleventh Lord's Nakshatra. Okay. And you have to see the Sun's Nakshatra, you have to see Mercury's Nakshatra, you have to see Saturn's Nakshatra. Okay. So the houses and the Karakas, they will give you these specific answers. Okay. So along with that, you have to see the house placements. Okay. So for example, let, let, let's talk with some basic basic nakshatra traits for example rohini nakshatra has a trait of envy right jealousy so people are jealous of them or they are jealous of others right one of the two always you will find now the thing is how will you know that they are jealous of somebody or everybody else is jealous of them right how do you know that yes that's not very easy to figure out but one simple way to figure out is if see whenever somebody is jealous of you what does it mean it means you have something which they don't have and it it is some significant thing which you have right so imagine two people are there and they have you know similar careers okay same pay scale same company or the company both the companies are in the same level you know then you will hardly find there is some active jealousy there can be some passive jealousy they may do some gossiping or backbiting sometimes but i'm not talking of that i'm talking of some serious jealousy here but suppose there is uh, a considerable parity okay one person is earning like in india suppose you know three lakhs a, ma uh, a year and uh, another person is earning you know uh, 21 lakhs uh, a year and both are of the same age right so then there can be jealousy okay if, or somebody is earning double triple the money right then there can be jealousy also or maybe even a bit higher than you then also there may be jealousy so for people to be jealous of you, you must have something uh, really very good which people in general admire, right? Only then people will be jealous of you, right? Of course, there are snakes, snake-like people who can be jealous for no reason. <laughs> but in general, you got to have something, uh, something like, like a diamond, right? Only then people will be extremely jealous of you. So now if you say in context of career, 
uh, if a person has prominent rohini and uh, the person has a very good 10th house a very good lagna a very good 11th house then it is but natural that other people will be jealous of them right but suppose a person has prominent rohini and most of the planets are badly placed okay lagna lord sun moon they are in the dusthanas or with the lords of the dusthanas then what happens is the person may not have even generic basic necessities in life you know like a partner or a decent profession or some mental happiness okay some basic necessities a person may not have a person may be severely deprived of basic necessities right so then it is but natural that the probability is higher that the person may envy somebody okay now of course i am not saying that those who do not have basic necessities are envious of others i am not saying but the probability is higher that you know they may envy somebody especially if their horoscope is not good good in the sense uh, they are not spiritually inclined or you know they are too materialistic okay so just because you are a beggar it doesn't mean you will be jealous but imagine um you you are a beggar and you are very greedy right then you are going to be envious of every businessman or any employee or any or any rich beggar right anybody rather so just because the horoscope is uh, having challenges it does not mean that there is envy but that's a whole lot of signs altogether in itself how to identify if there is envy you know and who is the karaka for envy in astrology yes mercury is the karaka for envy right so we can say if mercury is well placed people will be envious of you because you have talent and if mercury is badly placed because you don't have talent you might be envious of people who have talent right so therefore uh specifically we need to identify the karakas and the lords for that particular event of life only then we can understand uh which uh which way the horoscope is flowing okay so for example if you take this chart uh this is of a person who is born on uh, 11th of uh, october 1985 hisar india at uh, 12:45 pm okay so if you see this chart here you will find uh what's going on with the ascendant so first we always check the ascendant nakshatra okay so let me zoom out okay so you see the ascendant is in purva shada right okay i'll zoom in now uh then you you see uh the sun is in chitra then moon is in purva falguni okay generally these three nakshatras are very important the lagna nakshatra sun and moon these three are like primary nakshatras okay but here who is the atma karaka if you see mangal is the atma karaka mangal is in purva falguni here okay atma karaka is the planet with the highest degree here oh sorry uh, it's not uh, mars it is venus with 29 degrees so it's in uttar falguni okay so now you see uh, mars is the uh, amatya karaka which is the planet with the second highest degree so the amatya karaka and atma karaka mars venus and moon are in falguni nakshatras okay uttara falguni purva falguni purva falguni so then you know falguni traits will be very important for this person okay but falguni traits are also very peculiar sometimes right they may show that you are involved with a lot of people but lot of but many people may stab you or many people may help you to become rich or help you to get married so what will it be right <coughs> so if you see uh in this chart what is going on if you see where is the moon moon is in the ninth house right so here there is a very big raj yoga as per uh, jaimini astrology uh, there is the conjunction of the atma karaka and the amatya karaka right so if you see mars and venus here are together right along with the moon okay so this is a very big raj yoga and moon and all the three are in the ninth house ninth house shows you know lag bhagya spirituality gurus guides uh, teachers uh, coaches and education higher education phd and all this <coughs> then what about the 10th lord 10th lord mercury is in the 11th fantastic right then what about sun sun is in the 10th house in dikbala uh, in virgo excellent so uh, what about jupiter jupiter if you see the lagna lord is in t- uh, the second house it's in debility so 
the person might make some compromises to gain wealth sometimes because of that ability but second house is a great placement for wealth so now here you see uh, the 11th lord again venus is in the ninth house right so you see this chart is extremely strong for profession now why because i have made a hundred videos uh, trying to say when does a person have a good career so if you have not watched then please go and watch i have so many videos on career example charts okay so if you understand why do i say the person has a good career apart from being sun in the 10th house apart from that then please write it down in the comments okay i would love to know uh, if you are aware of the videos or if you have seen some other videos from other astrologers and you would like to share something so overall we know that this chart is an extremely potent chart for profession so now the uh, falguni nakshatra has very become very important right because uh these the, the the purva falguni and uttar falguni are involved with prominent planets like you know uh, the atma karaka the amatya karaka and moon especially right so therefore uh, now you know that falguni traits will play quite a important role in this person's life and falguni nakshatras can help this person to go up the ladders of success right so <coughs> what does falguni nakshatras represent they represent you know dealing with people contracts negotiations deals enjoyment celebration and all this both the nakshatras uttara and purva falguni you know these are some traits so and this is uh, this is something which may be a daily daily uh, part of it may be a part of his daily life okay so now you know that the falguni nakshatras are very important but more important than that is to know if they will help him or not so in his case it is helping him to go up the ladders of success but imagine there the horoscope was not good okay then the person could have been cheated by others the person could have been tricked by others to you know sign contracts and you know um, get into wrong things okay that's not very nice okay so therefore uh, this is how you see now of course there is chitra nakshatra there is purva shada also so i would love to know from you what do you think how will these two nakshatras like purva shada and chitra nakshatra play out right for a career or marriage or whatever okay so i hope you got the trust of thrust of this video which was to explain how to see important nakshatras and not just say you know oh this nakshatra is important uh, and this will happen right so yeah you have falguni so you will always deal with people you should become a consultant or you should become a wedding planner okay because you have pura falguni and pura falguni deals with weddings you know i have seen astrologers telling people you know become a wedding planner which is absolutely not necessary because there are thousand other things which pura falguni represents okay so therefore you have to see so many things you know so for example uh Uh, you have to see you know what what's the situation of the third house you know what is the seventh house what is the fifth house ninth house you know by that you can see what the falguni purva falguni can represent okay you have to come to a conclusion only after doing a comp- comprehensive analysis and not just randomly oh yeah you know your moon is in purva falguni go and become a wedding planner okay no it doesn't work like that okay so i hope this helps you to start and analyze nakshatras and see which traits of a particular nakshatra can be active okay depending on the horoscope depending on if the placements are supportive for a particular event of life or career or marriage or is it detrimental okay so thank you very much for your patience if you liked this video please click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know about the most important nakshatra in their horoscope okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him man if you want a consultation from me please go to my website down in the description section thank you very much